Hello and good morning. I'm Jay Diaz and we're doing episode 20 of White Fishes. I'm just going to double check. I've been just saying numbers for the past videos and it's never right. Um, but yeah, this is just a series where I go over the programs of orchestras in the US and UK. Yes, this is episode 20 confirmed. And I usually go and, and, and review five orchestras, five ensembles. We look at who the directors are just to see if there's, you know, where the diversity is. But for the most part, we found that directors are male and white. Um, we've had a couple of women, and I'm literally just like two who were leads so far. Um, we've reviewed... Including today, we would have done 76 um, U.S. orchestras, and then how many U.K.? We've done 37 U.K. orchestras. I'm going to start doing Canada and Mexico and just sort of slowly expand. Today, we're going to do Delaware Symphony Orchestra, Yale Symphony Orchestra, Hartford Symphony Orchestra, Carter Springs Philharmonic and the Afghan Symphony Orchestra. Um, I think I forgot to mention I'm Mexican. I have brown skin, long hair at the top, shaved on the sides, thick clear framed glasses, and my background is white walls. Um, all right, let's get started. So Afghan Symphony Orchestra. This came up on a tweet on on my feed um, this week. And the Akron Symphony Orchestra has um, at least the stats of their um, concert series just sort of came up on my feed. So for their 22-23 season, they have seven concerts, 27 um, compositions. Of those, 59% are American, 52% are by composers of color, 33% are by black Americans, and seven works are by living composers, and I guess most of, most of them are going to be joining them for the Akron performances, so that's really exciting. Um, so I wanted to dig into this one a little more. I really like this um, article because they just tell me. I don't even have to go to the website, but we'll visit the website just so we don't leave out Akron Symphony. <coughs> Um, so yeah, let's look at the season and see what the diversity is, um, cause it sounds great, right? So they're opening September 24th this year. Um, they're going to do Copeland, Price, uh, okay, I practiced this one. So they're doing Copeland, Price, and then Empi Cha Cha Ha, and then Grant, Walker and Gershwin. Um, so this is from the get-go. Obviously, this is like <laughs> more diverse than most programs I have reviewed to date. Um, it is, you know, it. I can't. One, two, three, four, five, six. So of the six pieces, two are by white men. And those two are queers. And then we have two pieces, three pieces um, by black composers. Um, and let's confirm Jared's. Yeah, Chickasaw. And then we have J uh, an indigenous composer. Actually, I don't know how. identifies. I'm just looking at Jared's sort of online information. It says that he identifies as Chickasaw. Um, so that's really exciting programming. It's like in terms of American, you know, we're just missing some Asian composers, Mexican composers. I mean, there's tons that's missing, right? Disabled composers, women. There's only one woman and there's five male composers. So that's sort of like we could do better. 
Um, okay, the next one, next concert, October 15th, they have Projections by Norman Rockwell, or Works by Norman Rockwell. Amber Kempthorne is the one doing the animations. Um, the composers are Stella Sung, Benjamin Britten, and Beethoven. Um, so two dudes, one woman, two white dudes. Uh, I don't know how Stella Sung identifies. I like her website. Excuse me. So I'm looking at Stella Sung's website, and it just says she's an international award-winning composer. She's been performed throughout the U.S. and abroad. She was composer in residence with Orlando Phil, and got uh, a cool award called Music Alive as well as a three-year residency with the Dayton Performing Arts Alliance and has been sponsored by New Music USA. Um, she has a PhD. Also, one reason why I haven't been posting videos is because of my PhD. Um, she's currently the director for Center of Research and Education Arts, Technology, and Entertainment at U of Central Florida and holds the Pegasus Professorship. What a name, Pegasus. Um, she, yeah, she got degrees from U of Michigan, Ann Arbor, U of Florida, where she got her DMA in piano performance. Um, and she has an MFA from U of Florida in composition. And this is cool. I'm going to listen to more of her music because I haven't. Um, back to Akron Symphony. Okay, so, yeah. So, again, lopsided programming. Um, I wonder how long Stella Sung's piece is compared to, obviously, the symphony is probably the longest thing on the program. And then the 4C interludes. So, looking at performance time, it's not really equitable. Next one is called Ellington's Nutcracker on November 12th. See, so they're doing Araspiki, Bonds, Perry, and Ellington. Um, so this two men, two women. So that's probably one of the first times we've seen a concert with 50-50 male women representation. That's exciting. We want more of this. We want more of this. Um... When it comes to race, they have Margaret Bonds. Is Margaret Bonds black? Yeah. Yeah. Just gonna gotta remind myself of them. So they have three black composers and one white composer. So that's also really exciting to see. Um, but again, it looks like we're hitting sort of like. the easy diversity target it's not even that it's easy there's tons of disabled composers there's tons of queer composers that are alive you know that we could be engaging with more so on december 9th their next concert they're doing bach julia perry xavier foley oh this has been getting played by a couple of orchestras um they're doing a giovanni Bozzini and a tchaikovsky Playing the strings. That's not where that goes. Um, I was disassociating. Um, so it's Bach, Perry. So we have. Let's see. I want to see who Giovanni Bozzini was. So he's an Italian composer. Okay. So we have two, th we have three white composers and then two black composers. So it's skewed. Um, we haven't seen any Mexican composers or Latinx, like we haven't seen any Cuban. We haven't seen any 
um, Honduran, Venezuelan, there's a lot of composers out there that were born in the U.S. <laughs> um, okay, we'll keep going. Uh, again, one woman, one, two, three, four men. Uh, okay, the last concert we'll review for Akron is uh, their February 11th, 2023 concert. Um, it's featuring Syrian refugees and from the Cirque Social Circus School. And they're going to play Mozart. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if I would do that. They're going to play Mozart Turkish March. And I think we could have chosen better. And then they're doing a Kareem Rustam and George Bizet. Milad Yusufi. Amini Kia. Saba Amini Kia. And Ahina Steda. <coughs> interesting program if you're you know if it was like the 90s or the 80s right this would have been like super diverse but today it's sort of just like the tip of the iceberg you know um we do have just one white composer unless Kareem Rustam is yeah he's Syrian he was born in Syria but it worked all over the place okay so there this concert has one white composer which is really great uh, oh sorry two two I forgot about Bizet um, two composers, and then looks like they have three Syrian composers featured. I'm gonna double check Milad Yusufi. Um, let's see, we found the website. So he was born in Afghanistan. And then Amiga, and then Hina Steda. So that's interesting. I wonder. So we have. Are there now women? I think there's only one woman on the bill. No, there's no women on the bill. Saba Aminikia is an Iranian composer. Um. Wow. Okay. So this one has no women. So yeah, this it's pretty serious sort of exclusion happening here although they have you know it's cool that they have 52 percent of color 33 black but it looks like most of these are men which is a problem so okay thanks Akron Symphony that's really cool um who is the director Christopher Wilkins may or may not be the director says that he worked with them through 2021 but let's let us know that now so it looks yeah Christopher Wilkins is still the director their associate conductor is Eric Benjamin Chris Albanese is the chorus director Jonathan Turner is the choir master Douglas Biata is the youth one so all men so that's also that's probably why the programming is skewed i mean it's usually men in charge so yeah okay let's move on to the next one i spent a lot of time on akron because i was just really excited to sort of see what was happening there now let's go to the delaware symphony orchestra they were founded in 1929 when the wilmington symphony and wilmington music school merged um, I wonder if this orchestra gets like hired by all those companies that are based in Wilmington. Like, do they do all these corporate events? I don't know. Okay, so the music director is David Amado. And 
doesn't look like they have any assistant directors. Their next concert is on June 3rd and they're playing Gershwin, Gershwin, Rachmaninoff. Laura Downs is the... Laura Downs plays piano? Is Laura Downs the actress? No, is it? They must be different people. Okay, I have to investigate. Laura Downs an American pianist. There's an actress. Downs. Who looks like the same. And she was just in this horror movie about witches. Okay, I digress. Okay, so um, this is an all dude concert. So Gershon Gershon Rachmaninoff. Um, and it's an all-white concert, so doubly bad. Triply bad. Forever bad. It's always been bad. Um, let's visit their archives, see if we can see two concerts. So we just saw... Are they... So let's look at May 13th concert. They did WC St. Sopra Loe. Oh, and another all-man, all man all white concert sorry I'm just taking a minute to breathe um, in April they did Sennacus Mendelssohn Brahms well at least it's not all white so that's nice in March of this year they did Satie Rachmaninoff Pulse that's all man that's all white um, in this one doesn't have a date well, they did, okay, this, this one doesn't have a date, but they did a concert with St. George, Hummel, and Beethoven. So that's the first non-white composer we've seen um, with St. George there. Um, in June, they did Baker, Ravel, and Defia. Is this... What baker? There's so many bakers. Can we stop naming composers bakers? Because I don't, I can't remember any more bakers. Claude Baker. Why are there so many bakers? Okay, so it's Claude Baker, and I think Claude Baker is white. American composer, still alive, born in 1948. The images for Claude Baker is just like two dudes at a beach. And I don't think that's Claude Baker either. <laughs> Come on, get to his wiki. He's an Eastman and an IU. Oh, he taught there. Um, okay, so Delaware Symphony, bunch of all dude, all white concerts. Every now and then you get like one Asian or one black composer, but it's mostly dudes. Mostly dudes. Mostly white dudes. Okay, I'm done with Delaware. Goodbye. Um, next one is Yale Symphony Orchestra, which was founded in 1965. It should be... I mean, it's probably not diverse because it's just going to play music by their students, which is majority white. Let's look at their website. Yeah, like the first concert, when you land on the landing page, it was two dudes and a woman. And now there's another concert that has three dudes and a woman. Now it's three dudes and a woman. Okay, sorry. It's just like a rolling um, gallery of stuff. Okay.
Okay, about us. About Maestro. The Maestro is William Button. And doesn't look like they have an assistant one. So let's look at. Previous concerts. They don't have any upcoming ones, so let's look at previous concerts. So they did a Ukraine one. They did the anthem. They did William Walton. They did Bar Talk. They did music. The concert band did something else. Yeah, yeah, that's all they did. That's a, they don't have like the whole program. They just sort of have a couple. Like they do, they, you know, they have Bartok and the Walton, but then they have like these other groups, things that performed. Okay, let's go to the other one. Oh, gross. So then before they did a Bernstein and Shasti, they did Bernstein Symph number two and Shasti number 10. So that's an all-dude concert. And then in November of 2021, they did Mozart, Emmanuel Sejuan, Rinna Ismail, and Berloy. Okay, so this is a better one. They have one woman, at least, and three men. Two of them are white. Oh, and it looks like they also did Valerie Coleman during this I don't like when symphonies don't like put the whole bill on their posters and it's not like it's that much room yeah okay so for the concert they did Coleman Mozart Sejuan and Brilloy so it is what it is And the last one we'll look at is from October 2021. They did Omar Thomas, Rachmaninoff, Coleman, and Strauss. So, and let's just look down here. Yeah, okay, so they did two white people and then two non-white people. And they have one woman. So like the previous orchestras, women are seriously underrepresented as are disabled composers, as are queer composers, as are living composers. So the, this one, not, not, not as good. Not as good. <laughs> okay, next we're going to look at the Hartford Symphony Orchestra, which was founded in the 30s. Maybe. Yeah. So in the 30s, th I get this is from the wiki. The U.S. government established the Federal Emergency Relief Corporation, which included a program to help struggling musicians through the Depression. People in Hartford seized the opportunity to bring orchestral music to Hartford, and the orchestra's application was accepted, and boom. Musicians rehearsed every day for a weekly salary of $21. Interesting. Interesting that during depressions, the U.S. government would be like, artist, here's some money to help you. Okay. <coughs> Their current director is Carolyn Kwan. That's exciting. Unless Carolyn is a dude. about musicians okay so they have a music director who's Carolyn Kwan let's read about Carolyn because I haven't really come across Carolyn before so she's worked with all kinds of companies around the world Worked with the Baltimore Symphony, Detroit, Milwaukee, Toronto, New York Ballet, Colorado Music Festival. I've been there. Worked there backstage. 
page. Um, New York City Opera, Royal Danish Ballet, Australia, Hong Kong, Yucatan. Oh, she was going to have a bunch of debuts with different orchestras in the U.S. and in Paris, but then the pandemic hit. I'm sure she's doing great, though. Look at this resume. Um, I wonder where she went to school. She went to school U of Illinois and Peabody. Cool. Now let's look at concert. Maybe look it up. Concerts? Loading. Okay, so I'm just going to load com a couple of concerts that are upcoming. Okay, so let's see if these are classical concerts. So they recently had a Scheherazade and Shankar. Um, blah, 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 performance. <laughs> so that's a two dude concert. So one non white, one white composer. So 50 50. But I'm sort of tired of those type of concerts. They also did a From the New World. Guess what they're playing? Dvorak, Brule, Price, and Dvorak. One woman. I guess Brulee's a woman. Harry Brulee is not a woman. Died in 1949, born in 1866. He was an American composer. Um, also a baritone. We're going to leave that up because I don't know anything about Brulee. He's one of the first um, prominent composers from the U.S. Black prominent composers. That's fun. Okay. Um, so this concert. Two white dudes black woman, black man, so 50-50, but again, we can do better, we can do better. <coughs> it's one out of four for women. Symphony in the Park, on June 4th, they're doing... Program is unannounced, so we don't know. On June 10th, they're doing... Glass and Beethoven. So that's an all-white concert, an all-white dude concert. Um, let's see if they have anything next month. So we're just looking at that. Let's see, we'll look at one more concert. Let's see. So Celebrate America. Uh, they don't have. They don't have that. Announced. So let's. Why don't we look at something in May or April? So they did a Harry Potter concert. So we won't look at that. The previous a uh, previous classical concert is billed as Rachmaninoff and Tchaikovsky, and that's exactly what they play: <laughs> Rachmaninoff and Tchaikovsky. So okay, fine. Mm. So programming overall with the Hartford Symphony Orchestra is skewed towards white men. Um, they did have a concert where it was 50% black, 50% white, where it was two pieces, and another one where it was four pieces. Women are still severely underrepresented, as are every other demographic. <laughs> it's like you tell orchestras to be diverse, and then they just do the minimal job minimal job. Okay, 
The last one is the Colorado Springs Philharmonic, and it was founded in 2003? Well, I thought it was a little older than that. Their current director is Joseph Caballa Dominic. Associate conductor is Thomas Wilson. So we got two dudes. Um, when I was living in Colorado, because I grew up there in northern Colorado, musicians from Greeleyville, Fort Collins, Denver, and Boulder would travel down to Colorado Springs for, and so it's like, it was the same musicians in all of the ensembles. Very clicky. Very weird environment. I'm sure it's different today because there's been a lot of, well, besides the pandemic, there's been a lot of other changes in in that sort of little Colorado ecosystem. Okay, Colorado Springs, Phil. Um, let's just verify who the directors are. So yep, conductors are Joseph and Thomas, as we said before. Okay, they have something in this weekend. And then since they don't have anything else, I'm going to look up. So we have that one. Yep. Okay, that should be enough. So we'll look at four, four concerts. Um, so they have a concert billed as Appalachian Spring... And they're going to play Mozart, Putz, Copeland, Sierra. That's all dudes. With one... Oh, what is he? What is he? I always want to say Cuban, but I don't think he's Cuban. Puerto Rican. Fuck. Let's get it wrong. Let's get it wrong. <laughs> um, so they have one Puerto Rican, three... White. And no women. Next, they have a program billed as Philharmonic Comeback Celebration. So I'm guessing this was them coming back from COVID. They're playing Scott Ord Ordway, Brahms and Rachmaninoff. So unless Scott is not white, this is an all-white male concert. Scott Ordway looks like he's super white. Went to Rutgers, taught at Curtis and Bates. Yeah, as far as we can tell, he's white. So that's not good. Um, yeah, so this program, all, all dudes, all white, not good. The next one, it's billed as Beethoven Piano Concertos 1, 2, and 4. And they did it in one concert. They did all three. So this type of programming is really destructive towards our economy because it completely excludes every other voice. Um, and Beethoven already really gets so much playtime and he's been dead for hundreds of years, so like we should move on. Um, okay, the last concert is billed as Schumann Spring and it's Preisk, Saint-Saëns, and Schumann. So two white dudes, black woman composer, and the two white dudes are given most of the performance and probably <laughs> most of the rehearsal time. Um, so again, things to look at when you're programming is just, it's not about checking boxes, it's just about bringing in people who have been traditionally silenced and excluded from the orchestral world because it's the easy thing to do. And it doesn't take that much work to research and look up composers who aren't white. One of the biggest databases right now is a composer diversity database. So there it is. 
and you can look up different works by different people and there's also um, I think it's called Illuminate Women's Music yeah so Illuminate Women's Music um, is just a great concert series and they have a bunch of resources to look up women composers so and there's tons of other databases these are just the ones that pop into mind right now um, and there's also the daffodil perspective so there's daffodil perspective run by Elizabeth de Brito um, and this is um, a podcast and she does a cracking job at programming um, diverse, at programming equitably. Um, and she's always improving. She's always looking for different composers to have on the program. You can listen to it on Mixcloud. Also, I think she just has it embedded on the website. Um, this is, again, a great resource to look up not just orchestra music, chamber music, solo music, duets. Um, you know, she looks at all kinds of composers, all kinds. It's really exciting. Um, so yeah, you know, I think we should move past the all white male programs. I don't really think those are okay anymore. I don't think they should have ever been okay, but that's where we are. Um, thanks. Bye.